anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box. Today myself and John are having a look at something a bit different. So, yeah. uh, we're going to be having a look at some of the paint sets for Team Yankee that uh -huh. the guys at Battlefront have came out with. So, uh, first up, this is the American one, uh -huh. and we also have the, the Soviet one. Yep. I believe there's also a German one, but these are the two that we currently have yes. set to hand. Um, if you guys remember back to Leopard Week, mm -hmm. uh, my painting work or my painting blog on the army that we used for Leopard ah, Week I see. used the German paint set. And if Justin could open a box these days, would I you opened the box. Awesome. Okay, I did right. the thing. Yep. You try and open the other one, smart arse. <laughs> oh, so cat like Mr. Lance. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the American set. So uh -huh. we're getting eight paints in this, yeah? Yep. I quite like the design of the little balls. So one, two, three. Four. Well, there's, well, there's eight, seven in this one. There's eight in this one. Okay, fine. There's seven. Okay, so we one. we may have a mispack, but no, we don't. We shouldn't have. No, 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 no. It's all different. It's all different. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, so first up, you're going to get your Yankee green. Yep. Which, uh, like I said, the bottles are kind of a cool design because they've got this sort of bullet design. Yeah. I assume lovely. this is going to be the main color that you're going to use for all your forces. Yeah. Yeah. This is basically Yankee green is essentially uh, American sort of forest green. Mm hmm. Um, that modern sort of. It's not NATO green because America didn't like using NATO green, so they went a bit okay. more vibrant. All right, we've then got uh, this one, which is being called Maverick Khaki. Yep. So, what would this be? Something you would use on your your aircraft, or is this sort of the the second stage tone for your camouflage? It's it's basically um, the color for the aircraft. I would say I'd say you'd be painting your Cobras and stuff in that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we then have Woodland Brown. Yep, that'll be your second tone camouflage. Okay. And then we have this, which is Rocket Steel. Which sounds awesome, but is pretty self-explanatory. It'll be so used as your dry brush on your weapons and stuff. Yeah, we then have Thunderbolt Grey. That sounds even cooler. <laughs> <laughs> it's American, it has to sound it does. It amazing sound, and awesome. It sounds awesome. No, I'm guessing this is what you're going to use for all your rubbers and track pads and stuff. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right, uh, then we there. have three more that I'm going to bring on out here. So we then have... This is actually Cobra Drab. Ah, well, there you go. So this would be more for your aircraft then, yeah? Yeah, most likely. Okay, we then have the Warthog Green. Which is a very dark green, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very dark. Would yeah. this be for some of your darker shading and stuff today? I'm not sure. We'll figure that out at some point. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then last one we have Ordnance Shade. Ordnance Shade is the finest wash they have in these paint sets. Really? Uh, this was the, the shade I put on to the, the Leopard 2s and all the German Alright, so this comes in the German set as well? Yeah, it came okay. in the German set. I believe it's in this set too. Which it is, yeah. Okay, so Ordnance is this just like a nice standard sort of shading piece that you can use? This, this is how you're getting... You know when you guys look at Flames of War models and you go, God, that dark lining is so awesome! Yeah. That's how they do it. They basically do use a pin wash with this stuff. Ah, um, I see. But what I did during Leopard Week was give everything a gloss varnish and then just wash the whole model in it. I, now, I remember I was talking to you a while ago about a painting project and you said actually the gloss varnish helps with a pin wash. Yeah. So it just it lets everything run into those. If, if you're a little rough with your pin wash, like say you have a little bit of a shaky hand as you're trying to follow the panel line, if you've uh -huh. gloss varnished the model, the varnish the varnish will just keep that wash where it needs to be. So you can be a little bit yeah. shaky and you yeah. don't have and to then be aesthetic. What you had me do after that was a, a matte coat over the top, yeah? Yeah, just okay. to bring it all back down again. All right, so let's have a look at the, the Soviet colors here okay. as well. So we're getting our one big pot, which is... Soviet green. Soviet green. I'm guessing the big pot is always going to be the, the main the, colour. The base colour. Now, Lloyd had a bit of a, a freak out moment this morning, didn't right. he? Right. He, uh, he was looking around because he's painting a few things, but he's a very big Soviet enthusiast. Yes. And uh, he was looking around going, what green do the Russians use? And I was like, we don't know. And he's like, what do you mean we don't know? It's like, well, all our research, mine and Lloyd's together, realised we couldn't find a standard shade of green for anything Soviet from... Second World War period up to more or less uh, so early to I'm 90s. assuming in the factories they just said, is it green? Yes. Okay, put it on. They were probably given a colour swatch for their paint teams and said, that's the colour it needs to be. And the, paint, the, the guys went, 
okay. And just sprayed whatever they had. Obviously, they had to thin it down with different stuff and mix it with different stuff to keep yeah. the paint okay. right. So. Uh, in this set, we've got another bottle of Rocket Steel. Rocket to do all your, Steel, yes. All your highlight uh, silver work. It's like a Duke Nukem quote. Yep. They've then got your Ordnance Shade. Yep. Uh, we've then got this, which is Comrade Khaki. This will be for your Russian uniforms. Ah, I see. That is that very light khaki color yep. uniform. We've then got Leather Brown. Which I assume so, is for leather. Uh, you would assume. <laughs> you then have this, which is Crocodile Yellow. Uh, yeah? Yes. Probably for some sort of camouflage or potentially to use as a dry brush coat over your mm. Soviet green. And then lastly, the odd one, Hind Blue. Yes. The duck egg blue for the underneath of your aircraft. Really? Yes. You would... Why? That's sky blue, pretty much. It's very light sky blue. Yeah. But that, that, that's the colour that people have been painting the underside of aircraft since the Second World War. Oh, now I get it, yeah, because when you're looking up, if it's painted the colour of the sky, less likely to see it. Less likely, unless it's flying through a giant black cloud and you go, that blue dot seems out of place. <laughs> <laughs> those well, 300 blue dots seem out of place. <laughs> the, yeah, those 1,000 blue dots, why are those going to our nearest uh, arms factory? <laughs> why is there little puffs of smoke coming out? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of these paint sets. So mm. I like the idea that I can grab one box and actually have the feel and flavour for a colour scheme for my faction. So I think yep. they're a brilliant idea. Yep. Actually, come to think of it now, the um, the brighter yellow, the crocodile yellow, yeah. is probably the base colour for your hind. Ah, That's I probably see. the... Because they're quite a vibrant colour scheme. Yeah. Um, yeah. These paint sets are great if you... Uh, seriously, I'm going to keep referring to Leopard Week because it's yeah, the yeah. best. It's an example of well, one of these Well, it's where you've actually went through and used one of them for an yeah. army. You only need to really look at uh, adding in perhaps a black, you know, just a standard matte black. Everybody should have some. Yeah. A bit of white, everybody should have some. Mm. If you're painting your tanks, find yourself a nice deep blue... Uh, to use for your periscopes and stuff like uh, that. And then when you when you have the model completely finished, get a little touch of gloss varnish and just touch them up again. Grand. Yeah. Everything's so good. It's, basically, this is going to do 95% of the work that needs done to your army. Yeah. And it's, then just adding a little bit of extra here and there. Yeah. And in tandem with the uh, the actual army books, the Team Yankee book and the, the Leopard book, yeah. they will tell you which paint needs to go where. So if you're not that keen on painting, this is a paint by number system and it's fantastic. It okay. works really well for the German ones. So. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, tell you what guys, drop your comments below. Have you used these paint sets on your forces? Do you think you need to be adding extra paints into them or do you think you get everything in the one box? We'll move on here and we'll see you in the next video. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com.